Lars Levy Lee Stadius. Lars Levy Lee Stadius, Swedish pronunciation. La Esla V. I lusted. D. I. O. S. 10 January 1821, February 1861, was a Swedish Sami pastor and administrator of the Swedish state Lutheran Church in Lapland who founded the Lee Stadian Pietist Revival Movement to help. Lee Stadius was also a noted botanist and an author. Lee Stadius himself became a teetotaler except for his ongoing use of wine in Holy Communion in the 1840s, when he began successfully awakening his Sami parishioners to the misery and destruction alcohol was causing them. Early Life Birth and Education Lee Stadius was born in Swedish Lapland at Jackvik near Arjaplog in a western mountainous part of Nåbotten County, the northernmost county in Sweden, to Karl Lee Stadius 1746-1832, a Swedish hunter, fisherman, tar maker, and one-time silver mine bailiff, who lost his job due to alcoholism. Both were of distant Sami descent. The family lived in poverty due to Karl Lee Stadius's alcoholism and extended absences. However, with help from Lars Levy's older half-brother Carl Eric Lee Stadius, 1775-1817, a pastor at Kavik Jock, with whom Lars Levy and his younger brother Petrus, 1802-1841, lived part of their childhood, the boys were able to pursue educations for due to their benefactor half-brother's death in 1817, the boys were constantly short of funds from the outset of their university studies. Nevertheless, Lars Levy proved to be a brilliant student. Because of his interest in botany, he was made assistant in the botany department while pursuing studies in theology. Lars Levy Lee Stadius was ordained a Lutheran priest in 1825 by the Bishop of Harnesand, Eric Abraham Onquist. Marriage and Family in 1827, Lee Stadius married Brita Katerina Elstadius, a local Sami woman who was a childhood friend of his, and together they had twelve children, at least two of whom died in childhood. Lee Stadius's Lutheran ministry and revival movement, parishes where he served. Lee Stadius's first parish was at Arjaplog in Lapland, where he became the regional missionary for the Pike district. From 1826, to 1849 he was the vicar in Kersuando Parish in Lapland. Near the end of his tenure in Kersuando, Lee Stadius applied for the positions of dean in Pajala Parish in Nawbotten County and inspector of the Lapland parishes. After he complemented his exams in Harnesand as required, he took over these offices in 1849 and held them until his death in 1861. Revival Movement at the time of Lee Stadius's 1826 arrival in Kersuando, the people of Lapland Parish suffered from widespread misery and alcoholism. Lee Stadius's awakening. Lee Stadius met a Sami woman named Mila Clement's daughter of Falange, also known as Lap Mary by the Lee Stadian Lutheran Church in the municipality of Krakum in Jamtland during an 1844 inspection tour of SL Inn. She belonged to a revival movement marked by pietistic and Moravian influences and led by Pastor Payer Brandel of the parish of Nora in the municipality of Cramfors in Angermanland. She told Lee Stadius about her experiences on her journey to living faith. This was an important meeting for Lee Stadius because after it, he said he first understood the secret of living faith. He had a religious experience, and he wrote later, that he at last saw the path that leads to eternal life. His sermons acquired, in his own words, a new kind of color to which people began to respond. The movement spread quickly from Sweden to Finland and Norway. Lee Stadius based his sermons on the Bible. Initial Effect on Parishioners According to an account from the Sami cultural perspective, the Sami began to notice that Lee Stadius had changed. His sermons were filled with vivid metaphors from the lives of the Sami that they could understand. He preached about a God who cared about the lives of the people. He attacked priests and traders who lined their pockets at the expense of others. After twenty years, something new had begun to happen between the 
Resistance The resistance to Lee Stadius's radical Christian ethics and morals and to his way of confronting the parishioners about their sins was greater in Padula where Lee Stadius moved in 1849, and the bishop decided in 1853 that two separate church services should be held, one for the Lee Stadians and one for the others. It could be said that Lee Stadianism, the religious revival named after him, became a movement in its own right at this time, although it remained within and never separated from the Church of Sweden. Rise of Lee Stadianism among the Sami The rapid rise of Lee Stadianism among the Sami was due to several factors. Lee Stadius proudly self-identified as Southern Sami through his mother and spoke and preached in two Sami dialects. Further, he chose uneducated lay preachers from the Sami reindeer herders to travel year around with them and preach to the unrepentant. Additionally, in the early days of the movement, Lee Stadius, in order to find common ground with his parishioners, borrowed the Sami's own familiar pagan deities and concepts and adapted them to Christianity. Another factor in the rise of Lee Stadianism among the Sami was that the state mandated boarding schools soon came to be populated by Lee Stadian personnel. Next, the strict moral code including strict temperance of Lee Stadianism appealed to the Sami. Whole communities that had been wrecked by alcoholism went dry virtually overnight. This had the added positive effect of improving the Sami's social standing with the outside world. Finally, Lee Stadianism was a faith that the Sami could identify as originating from within insofar that Lee Stadius himself professed to have come to know the true living faith only upon his encounter with the poor abused Sami woman, Mila Clement's daughter. Successor When Lee Stadius died in 1861, he was succeeded by Johann Rotoma as the leader of the Lee Stadian movement. Botanist Lee Stadius undertook his first botanic trip as a student. Later, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences paid him to travel to Skane in southern Sweden. He was as an internationally recognized botanist and a member of the Edinburgh Botanical Society as well as the Royal Society of Sciences in Uppsala. A number of plant species have been named for Lee Stadius, e.g. Salix Lee Stadiana Hartum, Kerx Lee Stadia Hall, Papaver Lee Stadianum Nord. Lee Stadius named many plant species. List of plants named by Lee Stadius in Ipney. La Recherche Expedition 1838 1840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840-840
Lee Stadia spoke Finnish and Northern Sami as well. He usually held his services in Finnish since it was the most widespread language in the area, but on occasion also preached in the Northern Sami and Swedish languages. Family Deaths and Personal Illnesses After the death of his older half-brother and financial support, Carl Eric, when Lars Levy was only a teenager, Lee Stadius mourned the deaths of his mother in 1824, his dad in 1832, and his younger brother Petrus in 1841. At least two of Lee Stadius's own sons predeceased him as well d. 1839-1861. Around 1833 Lee Stadius suffered from an ailment which the doctors first thought was pneumonia. He recovered. In the 1840s, Lee Stadius suffered from severe typhoid fever and later tuberculosis. Towards the end of his life, Lee Stadius experienced impending blindness and contracted a cholera-like illness. Books authored Fragments of Lapish Mythology 1997 ISBN 0-9685881-90 the Voice of One Crying in the Wilderness, a periodical published in the years 1852-1854 hardcover in original Swedish, and Zropans Rostai Aknin 1852-1854. Literature Gustav Dahlbach, Dan Gamla Aknaya Maniskin and Lars Levy Lee Stadius Theology, 1949. Lily and Ostvate Elvin Lars Levy Lee Stadius Spirituality Summary, The Spirituality of L. L. Lee Stadius, 2010. All Franzen, Natural Historiker Lars Levy Lee Stadius, 1973. Sipo Lohai, Sedamon Christelisses Lars Levy Lee Stadius, Ya Lee Stadia Lane in Heretixen, Alcuve Heat, 2000. Hanu Juntunen, Lars Levy Lee Stadius in Cassites Kirkosta, 1982. Christina Nilsson, Den Himmelsk for Aldern. In Studi of Cabinens Betitles for Lars Levy Lee Stadius Theology Ock Canals, 1988. Henning Thielen, Lars Levy Lee Stadius Ock Hans Forkanels, 1949. Gunnar Whitmark, Lars Levy Lee Stadius Vag Till Den Naya Fogson, 1988.